Hey, what's up everybody? So today I'm going to show you how to install an oil catch can system into your BMW 328D with the N47 engine. Now, the concepts here can be used for N47 engines across multiple models, whether you have like a European 520D, European 120D, or the 320D, 220D in Europe. Um, but some of the mounting points and other components in the engine bay might be routed a little bit differently. So if you have those models, Feel free to use this as the guide, but don't necessarily take it as the explicit gospel. So let's take a look at the components needed to construct this catch can setup. As you can see here, I have some silicone elbow and reducers. I have some 10 AN sized tubing. I have a uh, male barbed union fittings. And I also have the catch can itself. And securing all these different couplings are worm drive clamps. So let's take a look at the catch can itself. So this is a Mishimoto high flow diesel catch can. And quite frankly, I wouldn't really recommend going with this one. Um, it's hard to tell from the pictures, uh, but when I got this, I was really surprised at just quite, quite how large it is, especially these fittings. And uh, because of these fitting size, it's really not that easy to find uh, replacement barbs for them or different types of fittings. And also since, you know, we, most of the time you're going to be using something like 10 AN hosing, which is roughly half inch, a um, little bit more than half inch in inner diameter, uh, you're going to have to f get extra couplers to uh, upsize the, um, uh, the tubing. And uh, another thing about this design is, I don't know why, I've, I've dealt with a couple of these units, but it is so ridiculously hard to get the can off of the head. And if you like screw this together and you use more than just like barely any pressure once it uh, bottoms out, you're going to have such a tough time. And in fact, actually the first unit of this I got, I tried putting it in a vise using my strap wrenches and all that, and I could not separate the can from the head. And so Mishimoto actually had to send me a second unit. Um, so I don't know, this design, it probably works well for catching stuff, but in terms of like usability, ease of use, it's not that great. Uh, opening it up, you can see we have the can itself. Uh, I got a little bit of a blow by caught there and then there's a plug at the bottom uh, that you can use to install a drain if you don't want to try and unplug uh, unscrew this from the head on the head we have right there filter media up here and uh, you can see there's a little bit of space before it goes out of the outlet um, this can does seem to work pretty well i do catch a decent amount of stuff but it's also uh, kind of a pain to work with so you know some of the smaller ones out there totally fine don't need to spend nearly this much money and if I were to do it again I probably wouldn't spend this much money uh, this can was originally designed for large like you know v8 pickup uh, diesel engines and uh, it's not necessarily the most optimal thing for these smaller four cylinders so let's take a little bit of a closer look at these elbows so these elbows um, are from HPS and what I found is, is you really do need to go with this HPS brand. And the reason is, is um, the walls of this uh, uh, reducer elbow um, are thin enough so that they actually fit over the couplings. Uh, originally, I tried a different brand, um, which was also, you know, like a, a four ply like this one. And the walls are so thick that it couldn't actually get the connector that goes next to the uh, CCV output of the engine to fit. Um, and uh, also that one fit a little bit uh, more loosely. This HPS fits just right. Um, so just stick with this brand because if you go somewhere else, it's probably not going to fit and then you run into other issues. So I've seen elsewhere, some people recommend using a half inch barbed uh, union fittings with this uh, 10 AN hose. And uh, the 10 AN hose has something like a 0 0.55, 0 0.56 inch uh, inner diameter. And um, I decided to use 5 eighths so that I can try and maintain that uh, inner diameter. Um, and also so that, you know, the tube would actually have to expand going over this for a more secure connection. Uh, if you use a half inch, right, 0 0.50, there's a little bit of slop, so you're really relying on those warm drive clamps to create the seal. Versus if you, you know, upsize the barb fitting a little bit, then well, it'll create the seal even without the hose clamps. So here's a section of the 10 AN uh, hose that I have. And if you're wondering why I have a little bit of duct tape around the end, it's because um, that's what you should use to wrap it when you cut it. So this stuff is pretty uh, sturdy, difficult to cut. 
And uh, because it has this braided nylon around it, these edges will all want to fray if you're trying to cut it with anything, you know, serrated. Um, I actually used a rotary tool to cut this. And so wrapping it in the duct tape will prevent all the braiding from fraying out and getting all messy. And then afterwards, right, you can remove the duct tape. And since it is a nylon material, you can just use a lighter to kind of uh, uh, pass over any loose ends to get those to melt and shrink up. So that's, that's a little tip I would use when uh, working with this uh, tubing. Okay, now let's start going ahead and uh, taking apart stuff in the engine bay so that we can put our catch can system in. First thing we'll need to do is we'll need to remove our engine cover. So we'll grab up on the sides, pop it out of the things, and pull it out of the slots in the back. And then we can go ahead and remove our mass airflow sensor. So here it is right here. You can see it has a gray locking tab. So grab a tool of some sort, just expand that, you know, get it all the way, make sure it's all the way up, and then pull out the mass airflow sensor. And we'll just tuck this over here out of the way. Right next to the mass airflow sensor, there is this worm drive clamp holding the intake boot onto the uh, top of the air box. So we'll go ahead and take a screwdriver and just loosen this up so that we can separate uh, the top air box from this intake boot later. Moving to the other side of the engine bay, we can use a tool to release the four clamps holding the lower air box to the upper air box. And you'll probably want to support the back side of it with your hand just in case some of these clips decide to fall out. They're captured so they shouldn't, but I have had one do it in the past and then it falls to the bottom of the engine bay and then you have to go under the car to retrieve it, which, you know, isn't terribly fun. Now we can come back to the front and we can pull the top air box off of its three grommets. So right, we have the one in the middle. We have another one over here on the right. And the most difficult one over here on the left, which is kind of why I do it last. One thing to watch out for when pulling off the upper air box is sometimes this uh, rubber grommet that the uh, air box pops into comes out of its uh, claw-like mount. So just make sure that if that's happened, you separate from the upper air box and stick this in there uh, before trying to push the upper air box back down. Otherwise, it'll be really difficult and you will be wondering, why didn't it secure? Now that those grommets are released, we can go ahead and separate the top air box from this intake boot over here. And then we can just set the air box off to the side. There is one more connection to this air box down here, but uh, you don't have to disconnect that. You can just leave it as is and the air box can still twist and sit at this orientation out of the way. With the top air box out of the way, we can now remove the lower air box. Just take it straight up and um, you can see over here it's got these slots that slot into uh, the uh, intake channel. So that's kind of what holds it there. So now we can see the uh, CCV system and zooming in here a little bit more. At the top you can see uh, the CCV port for coming from the engine, the tubing that runs it down to the uh, intake boot uh, connector and heating element. And so that pipe is what we are going to be taking out and replacing with our catch can system. So first let's start by making some working room for ourselves and uh, I'm going to take a T30 screwdriver and uh, undo this mount over here for this power cable. Next we'll undo some uh, hoses and wires at the uh, bottom to make a little bit more room for ourselves. So over here I have this clip for a coolant line. We'll get that out of the way. And then you have this power cable here which will pop out of its little connector or its little holder and then we'll disconnect the upper part of it over here as well. So now we can kind of move this power cable uh, out of the way. Um, on the bottom we have this uh, power connector going to the heating element and uh, there's a little wire clip on it. You just press down on that and then you can pull that out. So we'll pull this and tuck this behind as well. So let's have a look at this lower coupling where the uh, tubing goes into the lower heating element. Now this is uh, normally secured by these little uh, metal metal uh, bands right here and as you can see this one isn't even cut and that's just how loose this thing was securing the uh, rubber um, uh, size adapter from the tubing to the heating element so um, you can try to see if you can just gently uh, wiggle and pull off the tube from the heating element um, if not 
you'll need to grab something and uh, cut those rings. Uh, as you can see, I replaced it with worm drive clamps, which works uh, totally adequately. And actually, I have a much uh, more secure fitting than the uh, original you know, metal clamps here. Actually, that area was absolutely filthy. There was so much gunk there because those metal clamps or metal bands that they supply really do such a poor job of uh, creating a seal between the tubing, the rubber, um, size adapter and the heating element. So here's a closer look at that uh, rubber um, adapter that adapts this uh, corrugated tubing to the uh, heating element that's attached to the uh, intake boot. And um, you know you can see in there right the corrugated tubing just slots in there and it's secured and then this end part goes over the heating element. Um, make sure you don't damage this rubber part because this rubber part only comes on assemblies that include the heating element which increases the cost dramatically. Okay, so now we're looking at the actual CCV output of the engine itself. And uh, as you can see on the left, we have an electrical connector and on the right, we have the actual uh, tubing. And the original piece that the car comes with actually has an all-in-one housing that captures both the electrical connector and the tubing. But uh, I accidentally broke mine, so I ordered a replacement um, pipe. And uh, this replacement pipe is way cheaper than having to get the uh, new assembly. The new assembly is you know, over $100, and I think I paid around $15 for this pipe, um, which is also a BMW OE part. Uh, so in the description below, I have the part number for this in case you need it. And this is actually a little bit easier to work with. Um, totally not necessary uh, unless you break your original one. So uh, to release the electrical connector, first we will just push down on this wire clip and pull it out just like the one below. And then we can go ahead and grab the uh, little tabs um, for these grip parts that go around the CCV flange. So right, these little uh, grips um, or locks, they lock onto the flange on the CCV output port. And the original housing only had one versus uh, this one has two. Okay, so now that we have everything clear of the uh, CCV output and the input into the intake boot, um, we're going to go ahead and start by mounting the catch can itself. So if we look all the way to the other side of the engine bay, um, I've installed my mount for the catch can over here in this empty area, and I've just made a clamp mount that uh, uh, grabs onto the pinch weld. Some people have drilled holes through there. I just decided to make this little clamp mount myself, and um, you know it doesn't look the best, but it stays secure through all my off-roading and uh, track day adventures. So this has been working pretty well for me. So if you're wondering why we've mounted the catch can all the way over there on the opposite side of the engine bay as the uh, CCV outlet, it's because the goal of the catch can is to allow the air mixture with uh, oil and other contamination to condense. So we're separating the air from the contamination. And in order to do that, we want the air to cool. So moving the catch can over here to the cool side of the engine bay and giving the tubing sufficient length to uh, allow the air to cool uh, will help aid in that process. You know, over here, if we just mounted it, you know, kind of by my uh, coolant uh, reservoir, uh, what we would happen is uh, we'd be getting a lot of residual heat because the turbo is right there. Um, so we wanted to mount the catch can on the cool side of the engine to help aid the air condensing and thus allowing the contamination to separate from the air so we have only clean air going back into our intake boot. If you're using the same Mishimoto uh, high flow diesel catch can that I am, um, this uses 5 30 seconds hex to secure the three screws that hold the can to its mount. Now that we have the catch can mounted holding everything up, let's go ahead and connect the bottom or the intake side first. So we'll take our uh, elbow with a worm drive clamp on it and uh, I did have to cut this elbow a little bit so it would uh, have the appropriate amount of standoff and not too much and we'll just slip it over that heating element and then uh, we can go ahead and take our screwdriver and uh, secure the worm drive clamp. Now that the elbow is secure I want you to take a look at how I've routed this hose. If you look here I've taken it and I've routed it behind the intake boot and then going up to the catch can. Now that we've got the bottom secure, let's go ahead and connect the upper pipe. And actually, we will want this to be underneath this uh, power line right here. So we'll go ahead and slide that onto the port. And then we can go ahead and tighten down the worm drive clamp. Now that the catch can system is all hooked up, we'll go back to uh, reconnecting all the lines and this power line that we uh, disconnected to make working space for ourselves. But I want to go over to the right side of the engine bay. 
um, to highlight something here and that is make sure that you have enough standoff between your power cable here and uh, this mount as well as the, the base of it because what can happen is this can get pulled too far over and um, when you put the engine cover on it'll actually touch this and rub and uh, you can actually rub through the insulation on that line so just make sure you have enough standoff you know pull it through this plastic uh, bracket if you have to and then when you mount it make sure that you have enough clearance between the cable and this mount so with that said, I'll go ahead and take this, bend uh, this bracket a little bit so it gives me the appropriate amount of standoff, and then I will secure it with the T30 screw. Then we'll come around back to the other side and do the same with this one. Secure the T30 screw. Next we'll reconnect the upper electrical connector, so we'll just slide that on until it clicks. Now we can do the same with the bottom, taking the electrical connector and popping it on the heating element until it clicks. And then we can also go ahead and uh, refasten the power line and uh, coolant hose to its to their individual clips to hold them in place. So we have the tubing at the bottom, we have a power line at the bottom, and we have another power line clip over on the side. Now we can replace our lower air box with our air filter. So as you drop this on, make sure it aligns with the slots on the uh, intake channel so that this is fully supported. Now we're going to replace the upper air box, so we will pre-position it kind of like this, generally where it's supposed to go. And then what we'll do is we'll make sure that the uh, intake boot aligns with the uh, exit of the air box, and uh, we'll just get those two coupled on each other. Now that the upper air box is aligned, the intake boot is popped on there a little bit, but not totally secured yet. We can go ahead and bring the lower air box up and uh, get that secured to the upper air box. So we'll bring it up so it slots in its grooves, and then um, we'll secure the four metal clips on the side. Next, we can go ahead and push the upper air box down on its three grommets to secure it. Now we can go back to the upper air box and intake boot, boot interface. Make sure the intake boot is fully pressed up <coughs> on the air box and then we'll use our uh, flathead screwdriver to secure the warm drive clamp. After that we can take our mass airflow sensor and go ahead and plug that in. And make sure we press the gray locking tab down to ensure it is fully secured. If you don't have that plugged in, you'll get an error as soon as you start the car. And finally, the last thing we'll have to do is place our engine cover back in. Um, if you look over here, you'll notice that there are two slots for the engine cover to slide into in the back, and then it pops down onto the front two engine mounts. So that's putting an oil catch can into our 328D. This mod is really more of a nice to have rather than must have. Um, with the stock engine tune, you will have some blow by, but it's not a ridiculous amount. Uh, one thing you really should think about though is if you are getting an engine tune, find out how much boost those tuners are running. Uh, I used to have a JR uh, Stage 2 on here and uh, it boosted a lot higher than the Kerma TDI tune I have now and uh, there was a lot more blow by with that tune. Uh, with the Kerma TDI tune, really this catch can don't really need it at all. Like I get less than an ounce of blow by uh, every 10,000 miles. But with the JR, I would definitely have at least an ounce of blow by every 10,000 miles. So, you know, even an ounce is in itself isn't a whole lot. Uh, so just, you know, consider what engine tune you're running um, when deciding to do this. Either way, a catch can will help keep your intake cleaner and also hopefully prevent fouling of the uh, intake manifold and valves.